Neil from Essex here to show you around a tractor that you may have seen some pictures of before. I, I've been seeing photos of this machine running around for a number of years now with this big old thing hanging out the front here and always kind of wondering what this tractor is all about. And believe it or not, there's one on our lot now that's for sale. This piece of like future technology is actually here and arrived and real and I'm kind of dumbfounded by that. So today we're gonna spend some time walking around this T6 tractor that's powered by methane. Essex, a helping hand with your land. So I'm standing here with the very first of these new tractors that I've ever seen before, right? A tractor powered by an alternative fuel source. Not batteries, not the sun, not whatever, but methane. Um, there's some interesting wording here on this tractor, right? New Holland uses methane on the side of the hood. They use methane out on the front fuel tank. But if you look over here at the side underneath the cab door here at the filling station, it says CNG, compressed natural gas. Natural gas and methane are basically the same thing, right? Methane is the biggest component of natural gas. The gas industry has chosen to refer to compressed natural gas as CNG as opposed to using the methane wording because it sounds less dangerous, right? It sounds less caustic in some way that uh, when using the word methane, right? Because there's a negative connotation there. It's one of the, the biggest drivers of climate change, right? A whole lot worse than CO2. So why would we want to be pumping that into engines to burn, right? So this is a lot more kind of like understandable name to the general public. But in an agricultural sense, methane is all around us, right? Uh, cows literally fart methane. Uh, some farms are gonna have manure digesters that are gonna capture the methane coming off the top of that digester and burn it for electricity, burn it in an engine. There's a farm nearby us here that does that. And in the ag sense, you can create this closed loop cycle here where you can have a dairy herd that's creating that methane off that manure and literally capture it and pump it into your tractor to power this machine. So methane and compressed natural gas, you can kind of think of these two things as being interchangeable, but in these different contexts, in that industrial context and in the ag context, they mean different things to us. When you first see this tractor, this whole thing looks a little crazy, right? You, big old machine with this giant blue tank hanging off the front. And it makes you a little queasy at first when you think of like new technology and new stuff on tractors, but the more that you look at this and the more that you kind of talk through what this actually is, the more sense it starts to make. Uh, if you're not aware, New Holland's parent company, the parent company of CNH is Fiat. And you probably have been on a Fiat bus or something at some point that's been powered by compressed natural gas, right? That's not new technology over in that kind of government subsidized transportation bus stuff, right? Uh, Fiat builds power plants for those buses through FPT, Fiat powertrains. And so this technology, this you know, methane or compressed natural gas technology has been around in that company for a while now. So for it to make its way into a New Holland product shouldn't be entirely surprising because this other division has already had it. In terms of the tractor itself, this is not as radically different of a machine as you might guess. Uh, essentially, the lower half of the engine is exactly the same engine as its diesel counterpart. They've removed the top end of the engine, removed the diesel injection and the diesel fuel system, and all the diesel after treatment and exhaust as well and replaced it with a gas injected head that's got spark plugs and everything at the top of it, right? So it very much runs as a, a kind of a gas engine on a diesel block type tractor. Now, because we're burning compressed natural gas now, which burns much cleaner than what diesel fuel does, this has a much simpler exhaust system on it. So this is a tractor that doesn't have any kind of EGR or any kind of DEF system on it that's typically required of a diesel machine in that class. That will be welcome news to everybody, I'm sure. So while the engine itself isn't radically different, the fuel itself is, right? There's some differences here between diesel fuel and burning methane or natural gas, right? Uh, this fuel is not as energy dense as what diesel fuel is. Gallon for gallon, you will get more work out of diesel than you will out of CNG. Now, this tractor in this configuration where we have 
tanks on the side of the tractor and these three tanks here out in front of the machine are gonna run about equivalent to a full tank of diesel, right? So the, the tractor in this configuration is gonna work in the field just as long as the diesel version would. If you don't need that long run time or filling up is really easy for you, you can buy this tractor without these add-on tanks here on the front. This is an optional extra that extends the run time. If you look at the tanks here inside, it is interesting, right? Obviously a high pressure storage and you're also gonna need to chill the fuel when it goes in to it. So by chilling the fuel and pumping it in at a high pressure, you can get a lot of natural gas into these tanks, which gives you a really long run time. It's funny here looking at this machine, right? So you've got these tanks out here on the front. And if you look to the left and the right of the machine where the, uh, the diesel tank would normally sit on the one end on the driver's side and the def tank and the rest of the exhaust system is gonna sit on the other side, simply has been removed and replaced with these blue high pressure tanks. So if you're curious about fueling the machine, here right on the steps is a little cover that you lower down. And on the inside of that, you have a pressure gauge back in here that's gonna tell you how much fuel is in those tanks. And then two receptacles right here, one for filling the tanks and one for uh, defueling the tanks if you need to remove the fuel from the machine. It's as easy as pulling up and plug it in uh, for the most part. If you look here in a little chart, uh, with the standard version of this tractor without the range extender on the front, you'd get 47 and a half gallons in it. But with that range extender, you have 117. So you can take 117 gallons of natural gas. Now, as I said before, the ultimate like application for a tractor like this would be filling it off of a manure digester, right? Basically free fuel to the farm that's able to capture that methane, compress it, and then fill the tractor with it. For us here at the dealership, if we happen to run this thing empty, we need to load the tractor up and run down here probably about 15 minutes away fr from us where there's a municipal recycling center where they have a CNG fill station. So we were able to find one here not terribly far away from the store, but your options for finding things like that in more rural areas than us might be a little limited. As with all new stuff that comes out like this, you expect things to be like radically expensive, right? I mean, that's just oftentimes what we've become conditioned to expect when we look at like battery powered things and that kind of stuff, right? Without government subsidies, how can this make sense? And the tractor itself here actually kind of does on its own. Um, the machine here is only about 10% more expensive than a diesel powered machine. Uh, so the, the tractor itself is not wildly more money. Now, if you get into needing the infrastructure in order to compress and pump gas, say you're trying to take the methane off a digester and put it in the tractor, you're probably gonna need some kind of fueling station in order to do that. And I would guess there's gonna be some significant costs tied up in that. I know nothing about it. But more than likely, when you take that step further and you figure there's probably gonna be green energy grants available out there in order to help offset a lot of these costs, I think for a lot of people, you're gonna be able to pencil this tractor out and have a payback period on it that probably makes a lot of sense. So as cool and innovative as this stuff is, right? Uh, different fuel source, tanks on the front to contain it, pipe it up into the engine and burn it. The rest of this tractor is exactly like any other T6 tractor. Um, we've got other ones sitting out here on the lot that we can jump in and out of. They drive exactly the same. You have electro command or dynamic command transmission options the same kind of choices for monitors, loader ready configurations, just like we would on other machines. There's, it's almost boring, frankly. When, when you get away from the methane side of this itself, the rest of this tractor is just like any other machine. And well, when I say boring, I, I almost mean boring as a compliment. Um, because there's nothing here that's scary, right? There's a day that we're gonna have battery powered tractors and we're gonna have all kinds of stuff to talk about because there will be benefits and compromises and, and all those kinds of things to that newer technology. But in terms of this, we know all of this, right? We're just burning something different inside the engine. So with that said, let's go for a drive. If we start the tractor up here, Sounds like a tractor. <laughs> uh, it does, the engine does have a different uh, tonality to it than what a diesel does. There's a little less, little less rumble um, and virtually like literally zero vibration. I don't think touching the machine here that I can feel like anything shaking at all from just that 
you know, motion and momentum that you normally get out of these, uh, out of a diesel engine in a tractor like this. So if we drop our steering wheel down here and throw this thing into gear. So this, uh, Tractor comes in two different transmissions here for the US, the dynamic command transmission or the electro command. This is the less expensive electro command version. So this is four gears in four ranges. Drives just like any other tractor. Um, so if I wind the thing up to full speed, I hear frankly, almost as much transmission noise as what I do noise from the engine itself. It's really quiet. Um, and the, the cab noise, I would say, is really quiet too. This is probably one of the quietest tractors I've ever been in before, when the monitor's not beeping at me. <laughs> But yeah, you, you hear the whine from the transmission as I pick up speed, but that's about it. Now let's let's stop here. If we bring it the whole way to a stop. That's it. Wide open throttle. So really all said, I'm not sure what anybody could possibly complain about here. Um, it fuels up like any other tractor, right? A couple minutes at the gas pump, you're good to go. It pulls like a diesel does. It drives like any other tractor does. It's got the same transmissions in it. Um, it is absolutely quieter. I could pick that up right away. And the total lack of vibration in the machine is really remarkable. I'm not sure why that would be, right? The, it's got the same lower half of the engine that the diesel does. Um, but the, the complete lack of vibration is interesting. I need to go jump into one of the other ones and see if that feels the same way. Because this doesn't make any sense. If it's just me, like why, if it's the whole bottom half of the engine is the same, why would the vibration seem that different? I can't tell you exactly why, but from turning the key, running the natural gas version, I can feel zero in the steering wheel. And even at, at idle, it's not a lot or objectionable at all, but you can feel, you can feel the engine in the steering wheel and in the glass and on the dash and everywhere. And I had zero in the natural gas tractor. And this is without a doubt louder. So interesting to me to be able to prove it out. You know, like I jump in and out of a lot of the machines and it's not too often that you turn the key and you think, oh, this is quiet, but is it actually quiet? Yes, basically zero vibration and without a doubt quieter than a traditional tractor. Nothing. So in conclusion, this is cool. Uh, you know, you become a little jaded after a while when you see press releases and, and what seems like gibberish about the future of green energy and whatever. And so much of the time, it, it seems like products that aren't ultimately gonna make sense for somebody are never gonna make it to market. They might make great prototypes and great conversation pieces for a company's green initiatives, but does it actually make sense? And I'm a little, shocked to see one sitting in front of our store to jump in the seat and drive it around and not be able to see a red flag here that says oh you gotta watch out for this right when you know that's coming with battery right battery will be cool it'll be here someday it'll make some sense in some way but there's there's going to be compromises but with this i don't know what the compromise would be right it 
it's a great tractor. Um, and again, you've got to be able to get the fueling side filled out, filled, figured out, right? You can't just pull up to any old gas station to get your, your bulk delivery of compressed natural gas to be able to fill up off your farm. There's That's a legitimate concern here. But if that can be overcome, if there's a way to get that compressed natural gas, to get that methane into the tractor, that you could go out and run it, there are some fantastic use cases for this machine. And I think that's pretty exciting. Um, I think we're actually seeing one of those, you know, aspirational new technologies that you just question when you see them, actually make it to market and actually kind of make sense. And I'm kind of excited about that. So you're shopping for a tractor and we can help. If you've got parts of service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. I'm talking to myself as other people are driving by. I'll do that again. So in conclusion, mm -hmm.